What's up guys, welcome back to the vlog. We're back here today with the RX-8. So we're gonna go ahead and jam on this AccuWare setup. We are bagging this RX-8, we've already wide bodied it. Turned out killer. And we've got all the AccuWare bits laid out and ready to go. We've got our instruction manual, our Endo VT tank, our switch speed ECU, all of our wiring, our switch speed touchpad, which uh, controls the car up and down. One of my favorite pieces from AccuWare. Um, and then all the random bits that go with it, our compressor, our template, and our 3 8 airline. So this is the most basic air setup you can buy from AccuWare for uh, any vehicle. Uh, you just pair it with the struts of your choice. We've chosen to use UAS strut, as you guys have seen in previous videos, that is slipped over our existing coilovers, which we actually really liked the coilovers. They're great. Um, so we're, we have high hopes that the bag set up over these coilovers is going to be amazing. As you guys can see, Beckerman got them installed while I was gone. All ready to go. We've got some new top hats. Um, this is a prototype setup from, from UAS, but uh, I see the clearance issue has been resolved. With the factory top hats, we were having some clearance issues against the frame rails. I think we discussed it. Uh, they did whip us up some new upper hats that offset the strut which uh, created the clearance we needed. So thank you UAS for being creative and uh, you know milling us out custom parts at the last minute, which is awesome. It's always great to have partners that do custom work because when things arise, we can get over the hurdles without a bunch of challenges. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with the airline. Evan's gonna route the airline. We've already looked into the car and sort of um, dictate, it dictated or mapped out where we're gonna put it. And uh, he's going to start feeding that through while I start uh, figuring out the tank location and all that stuff. And now there are some tricks to all these, so we'll go ahead and bring those to you guys as we do them. The tank, I'm going to go ahead and get this. There's a cellophane wrap on this tank so you don't scratch it up while you're installing it. That's what the sticker stuck on. is isn't actually stuck to the tank. Uh, what I like to do is actually use a razor blade and follow this little seam lightly with the razor blade and cut off the plastic cellophane so we have access to all these ports. As you can see, this one's still covered up and you cannot uh, access any of this stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the cellophane around the feet as well so that we can uh, mount these tank mounts on the floor of the trunk and get this tank in the car. At that point, we'll move on to the compressor and uh, how we're going to route the controller and the ECU which will be mounted in the trunk as well. I'm routing the airlines right now like a peasant while Mickey does all the fun stuff. What? I'm just kidding. What I'm doing is not that fun yet. Alright so we're really uh, focused on here is making sure we run the airlines away from any moving parts and also anything that creates heat. So we've kind of mapped it out and I'll show you guys once I get uh, some progress on this. Um, of where we're going to run the airlines and that will ensure that we don't have you know any leaks or anything like that or any potential issues as far as reliability goes. This is so long. So there's a fitting on the side of the bag and we're using, bottom of, bottom of the bag, we're using this transmission jack actually to simulate the wheel going up and down in the entire range of motion and trying to determine a safe place to route our airline. I hope, <laughs> I'm not sure if above's going to work, well, nope, above's not going to work. Or maybe it will, but. Essentially, uh, we've got the airline routed from uh, the strut 
um, kind of through the suspension safely and then through, um, what do you call this? Subframe. Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, it's subframe, a subframe brace. A subframe brace. Um, it's like, you know, completely protected. It's away from the exhaust. Um, the airline is not in contact or anywhere near this exhaust. And then we're gonna route it right here, tucked up against uh, the brake line and fuel, fuel lines, uh, brake lines actually. Yeah, fuel lines right here. We'll put it through this skid plate here and uh, route it all the way into the trunk. So when you get to this point where you're about three quarters of the way back through the car, but you haven't really sorted out where you're going to run through the chassis and up to the tank, what I like to do is actually cut this off pretty long. You want to leave yourself a bunch extra. That way, if you have to go up and over something or you change something at the last minute, you have it not enough here that you don't have to reroute this whole line. But what I like to do now is cut it here. I know I've got enough line to get to where I got to get, but this allows me to then start routing the other front one where I can start routing these together. From my experience, this is the easiest way to do it. Cut it along here, start routing the driver's side line along with the passenger side line, get them all zip tied, buttoned up kind of where you want them. And then you, uh, at that point, can make your holes in the chassis so that you can mount your bulkheads and uh, run the lines to the tank where your tank's gonna be placed. Hope that's enough. So we want to make sure that your airline is cut with a nice 90 degree uh, cut on it. No rough edges or anything because this can uh, create leaks down the line. Usually when you're sizing these up, when you do make this cut, it's usually you never really take it out and recut it. So uh, you guys saw I use a little like cigar cutter or hose cutter for that. Uh, it does ensure that we've got a nice smooth 90 degree cut. So I'm going to go ahead and push this in the strut which could potentially be the final time as long as we don't have any leaks. We're gonna go ahead and uh, loosely zip tie our line into place where we're planning to route it. That way we know that when we pull on the line, we're not pulling away our slack. That was pretty simple. Zip tie the front lines together here, basically at our, what is essentially our fuel line uh, routing area. I got chotched. What do you mean you got chotched? It's, it's a new word I just made up, but basically when you start a project with a partner and he finds something better to do and just leaves the rest for you to finish. Chotched. Excuse me? Chotch. Send out the pencils. Okay. Oh, my job is done. A1. And that's chotched. I got charged. What I want to stay away from is exhaust and axles. So those are the moving bits. Technically, we'd want to go over the axle with the subframe. So let's go. I'm not sure why I close my eyes to do stuff like this. It's like I'm You're channeling blind, my inner blind man. found a hole in the chassis that's for the sunroof drain mm -hmm. on the driver's side. The hole is the exact size of our bulkhead fitting, so I'm gonna go ahead and, it's actually in the perfect location for the driver's side bulkhead. 
So I'm gonna pop their sunroof drain out of the hole, use that hole, and move the sunroof drain somewhere else. These bulkheads are really sick. So basically you just drill, I think this is a one inch hole. No, sorry, three quarter inch hole? Either three quarter or seven eighth inch hole. I'm not 100% certain of my micrometer on me, but drill out the hole the size of the body of this. Um, I just use a Christmas tree bit um, and get it to hot so that it just slides through. And then you have a nut on each end uh, that snugs it up and seals it. Um, if you're finicky like me, you'll just put a dab of uh, seam sealer around the edge of these bulkheads so that there's no leaking going on because they are in the wheel wells where water gets splashed around. This is pretty snug. I might have to open it up just a little bit. And if that's the case, we might as well just draw our own hole and leave the sunroof uh, drain where it is. Like a glove. Nice clean install. Ooh. I got it. That's good. I got it. Tight enough. Thank you. I didn't want Rick to know that I sanded down his one inch wrench. The bulkhead is now um, mounted inside the trunk on the driver's side, so now we just need to connect the dots. So the strut to the bulkhead, and the bulkhead will get a line on the other side of it inside the trunk from the bulkhead to the air tank once it's installed. I'm just gonna go ahead and make the strut to the bulkhead uh, connection right now. Nice square cut. AccuWare provided these uh, little 90 degree fittings, which are pretty cool. So this presses into the bulkhead and your airline goes into here. So you have a 90 degree instead of trying to, to uh, put tension on a hose into the fitting, which will eventually leak. Uh, you also have to make sure you don't put tension on these because these also have the uh, potential leak as well. All right, strut is connected to the bulkhead. Now all we have to do is run the airlines from the bulkheads to our endo VT tank and the bags are routed. So these 90 degree fittings are really cool. Since these are our front lines, which we've obviously left long, we're gonna run these to the, um, the driver's side of the tank. So we're gonna end up cutting a foot, foot and a half off these hoses, but it's always good to leave these long so you can adjust them back uh, as needed. Now I'm gonna try to size up the uh, rear lines off of our bulkheads. I'm gonna utilize two more of these 90s. I'm running out of these. Hopefully we don't need them on the tank. Uh, these really help get the, the hoses out of the bulkheads in a nice clean fashion. You can route them along the chassis behind uh, what we'll be putting in when we're done is the, uh, you know, the carpet uh, covering that goes in here. So when this is all done, you're not going to see any of this. So you're just going to see a tank sitting here and a compressor, which is pretty cool. A few minutes later. All right, so I've routed our driver's side airline along across the back bulkhead of the car um, and went ahead and zip tied the airline up to the existing chassis harness in here. Um, so that it doesn't vibrate around and rattle and those things and it runs over here to our passenger side bulkhead where I've actually zip tied it also to um, our other rear line. Um, but you have to be a little cautious with this method because you don't want to put undue stress on this 90 that I showed you guys earlier uh, because if you do if the other line starts to sort of kink that it will create a leak at this fitting and that's the last thing you want in an air system is a leak. So uh, what I've done is I've actually over zip tied it. I've got three zip ties within about a four inch area here. Um, and once these are routed to the tank, uh, they'll be pushed back, creating the appropriate angle for this 90. Uh, I feel really good about this setup. It's gonna be super tidy. You're not gonna see any of these lines except where they go into the tank. Um, these are our front lines again, left very long. Uh, we're at a point now where we can actually start uh, figuring out how we wanna mount this tank. Uh, kinda know where we want it to reside. Uh, but where it's actually going to sit front to back in relation to um, the trunk is important because with this car the struts mount right basically kind of where I want to put the tank. If we ever have to service the struts the, the air tank's going to have to come out and it's kind of a pain in the butt. So I might want to offset the tank a little further forward if we can to create clearance to reach those struts and all the bolts that fasten them in. All right, so I've removed the, uh, the clear protection that Acura puts on here so the tank doesn't get scratched up in shipping. I like to leave it on the majority. I like to leave the plastic on the majority of the tank, just to cut the caps off. That way we can access the, uh, 
the valve and uh, power stuff and then also the feet because these feet come off they'll need to be mounted on a piece of wood so you undo these set screws on the end of these feet that's what locks these feet into place so we mount these uh, using the template that Acura provides on our MDF board or on the chassis pan and then the uh, tank clicks into these once they're mounted and then you tighten these set screws and the tank is locked into place. It's actually a really bitchin' setup. So that's about all the time I have for you guys today, unfortunately. Um, I'm pulling a Beckerman and just calling it an early day today. You know, part-time style, you know. I'm gonna go ahead and chotch, be chotch Beckerman and uh, dip out because tomorrow I'm actually gonna be on the dyno with the Bad Apple, so I'll be making a video of us dynoing the car tomorrow. While he's finishing up the rest of his install, the rest of it's very easy. It's mount the tank, run all the power wires, and uh, give it a test. So part two of this video will be very rewarding, so stick around for that. Hope you guys learned something today. Thank you guys for subscribing. Thanks for all the great comments and the thumbs up. We'll see you guys next time.